Welcome back. In the last few videos, we've finished off the CSS, the mobile first view. But you can see once we stretch the browser, the width of most of the elements have been set to 100% wide and it begins to look really stretched. So one thing we're going to do to make the website respond to the different size devices is to set some media queries. Our media queries are used to set some rules as to when we apply certain CSS. So in our case, we're gonna be setting media queries to be triggered once we hit certain minimum widths. So in the case of this video, we're going to be setting the first media query to apply once the browser gets to about 600 pixels wide, which is here. And we normally want to set media queries to apply once the content starts to look stretched or once it breaks. And one thing you may notice as I'm stretching the browser, in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little box which shows the width in pixels. And that's a Chrome extension called Viewport Dimensions, if you're interested in downloading that. So to start, I'm gonna set the browser width to be just over 600 pixels. And then go back over to the CSS file. And I'm gonna create a comment. So I'm just gonna copy the mobile first comment from the very top. And I'm going to paste this below the footer section. And I'm going to call this section for devices greater than 600 pixels. And also one more comment. I'm going to section off the top menu because this is going to be the first section that we're working on. Okay. So to get started on the top menu, we'll be working with the unordered list because I'm going to move this menu up to be at the top of the image. So let's get started with the header section and the unordered list. Okay, so let's set the position of the unordered list to be absolute. And that's so we can position the menu over the background image. I'm going to set the menu to be 8% from the very top. So we'll change the top value to 8%. So that pulls the menu up to the top of the web page. And then next, I'm going to set the text line to be center. And so we can see the menu over the background. I'm going to set the background to be white. Okay, so the menu is still stacked on top of each other and we want the menu to be in line across the top of the page. And we can do that by targeting the individual list items in the header. So header li and also header lia. So that targets the list items and the links. So first of all, we'll set the display type to be inline block. And now we'll get the list items across the page. And to remove the gray background, I'm gonna set the background color to be transparent. Okay, then next I'm going to remove the default border on the bottom, which we set in the mobile view by setting the border bottom to none. And then to make sure the text appears on the white background, we'll set the text color have the value of 4A525F, which is the gray color you can see there. And then next, I'm gonna add a little bit of padding, just of five pixels, just to make the button a little bit bigger. And next, I'm gonna add a border on the right-hand side of each one of the list items. So I'm gonna do that in the header, LI. So I'm gonna set the border on the right, and I'm gonna give this a value of one pixel, a solid line, and the same color as the text, which is 4A525F. Okay, good, so just to remove that final border right, we can do that in the same way as we've done before by targeting the last child. So header, list item, last child, and change the border on the right to be none. 
and let's take a look. Great, so the last border is missing off there, so that looks better. So we're nearly finished with the top menu now. The last thing I just want to add is a slightly different hover color. So let's go into the header, list item in the hover state. And I'll also select the same header LI, but for the hyperlinks. And again, select the hover state. And then we're simply gonna change the background color and it's going to be a slightly lighter color than we used on the mobile view. I'm going to set mine to D8CCCC. And let's take a look. Okay, good. So that's how I want the top menu to look on the tablet view. So we can just put a comment at the end of there of top menu end. Okay, so on the tablet view, I just want to push the text and also the apply here button. A little bit further down so it's more in the center of the image and um, because we've got a little bit more screen size available I'm also going to increase the font size so let's go back into the CSS and um, we can select the text with header P so up in the mobile view in the header P section we reference the text to be 60% from the bottom of the container so just to pull it down a little bit, I'm gonna change the bottom value to be 40%. And that looks a little bit better. And then I'm gonna increase the font size to be two M's. And then let's also pull the apply button down. So the apply button had the ID of apply dash BTN. And I'm going to set the bottom to be 30%. And let's take a look. Okay, so now we've got the header section all finished for the tablet view. We can move down onto row one. And we can move the browser most popular courses section to be on the right hand side of the first row. So let's go into the class row 1-1. So to make it only appear half the width of the page, I'm gonna set the width to be 50% rather than 100%, which is on the mobile view. And then a little bit of margin on the top of 2%. And that just keeps it nicely away from the image. So now we've set the left-hand side to be 50%. We also want to make the text only 50% too. So next class is row 1-2. So we're gonna use a different technique to position the text on this part. We're going to use the Flexbox, which is a great CSS feature for positioning and laying out websites. So we use the Flexbox by setting the display type for the container to be flex. And as mentioned before, I'm gonna set the width of the container to be 50%. So you can already see that we're starting to get what we want. And then a couple more Flexbox techniques are going to be, first of all, justify content. And we're gonna set that to center. And justify content sets the alignment on the main axis. So by default, that's left to right. And to set the alignment on the cross axis, which is opposite. So in our case, it's top to bottom we can use a property called align items. And again, set that to be in the center. And then lastly, set the background to have the color of white. Okay, so the last thing I want to do with the text is just keep it away from the edges. So just to keep it contained, I'm gonna select the row 1-2 and then the P. So that will select the text. And I'm gonna limit the maximum width to be 60% of the container. So now we should see that that's nicely centered, even when the browser gets a little bit smaller or bigger. Okay, so that's the header and the first row all completed. We'll leave this video there, and in the next video, we'll continue down 
into the second row and we'll finish off all the styling for the tablet view.